Hello and welcome to episode 7 of series 2 of Urban Informatics Over Coffee. I'm Ellen and I'm hoping this video is going to be super quick because all my others have been really long so far. So I'm hoping hoping to uh, entertain you in a shorter amount of time today. Leading on from episode 3, which was actually the last episode, we brought contours into 3ds Max to turn into a site model. So if we re-import these for the moment... And we look at our import options. When we import the contours into 3ds Max to then turn them into a terrain model, it's easiest if you import everything as one object. So rather than getting all the individual contours as an editable spline, we import it as just one object and all these splines are one spline object, if that makes sense. So if I press on my import, it is all just one object. So you see how it everything highlights yellow. And I know that this is accurate because we fixed it up in episode three. So before we create our terrain, we want to clone our layer because how we turn it into a terrain will turn all our lines into a mesh and not give us the lines. So if we just copy this and hide that layer, then we have a copy that we can refer back to later. Also, while I'm here, generally contour lines don't give you where rivers are. So it, the contour stops at the river and just gives you a flat surface. Whereas if we wanted the actual terrain, not including the water, we would need to dig down into the contours or add more contours that go into the negative space, which is what I've done here. I've just offset the river's edge a few times and lowered it so that when I do turn this into a, a mesh, you can see that there's actually a divot where the river is rather than just it looking like part of the terrain because it's flat. So that's just an extra bonus point. But to turn this into a terrain, super easy. Compound objects, we're going to create one and we're just going to press terrain and it generates a mesh for us. And you can see, very clearly see where the river is because I added those extra contours to divot in where the river was. The reason it has corners cut off is because I turn our contour layer back on that we saved. It's just where the nearest point was. But that's all right because our site's here and it's not going to interfere with us at all. You can see it has no thickness to it because it is a mesh so to make it easier to edit from this point out it's quite simple again we're just going to add a shell modifier to our terrain which will give it a thickness you can see it has a tiny thickness now to make sure it doesn't manipulate the terrain too much we're not going to add any outer amount. So the way the shell works, it, it takes the mesh as the middle and then it'll expand it on either side. So if I add 20 meters to make it obvious, you can see it goes down below the mesh. But if I add 20 meters on the other side, it goes above the mesh and you can see it does some wacky things. So it's all right if this, these wacky things are on the bottom side. So if I change that back to zero and make the bottom one 100 meters, the top still looks nice and clean. Um, the bottom's a bit whack, but again, that's fine. Where we're actually modeling is nice and clean. And now that it's a solid, we can add a plane for a river, which I've already drawn one in and I've just pulled it up to a level where it would sit. Move it on the Z axis. You can see what would happen <laughs> if the sea level rose, I don't know, 50 meters or something. And because it is now a solid as well, we can freeform model. If we add our edit poly and then scroll down to paint deformation, we can then deform our landscape however we like. But that's it, that's just how you get to this point from turning your contours into a site model which you can edit. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one with a brand new coffee.